Okay, so an agreement which is enforceable by law is a contract. That is what we have been studying so far. But any agreement to be entered between, it is entered between two persons, right? Minimum two persons are required. You cannot enter into an agreement with yourself. So that is there. But persons we should not say. We should say parties. What are the parties who are capable of entering into a contract? Who is eligible to enter into a contract? That is what we need to understand. So part person is a very limited word. Pers uh, parties would include any person, right? So that is what we should say. Uh, instead of calling it as a people, we should say person or parties. So who are the persons? So a capacity of parties, like this is this comes from section 10. Section 10 states that a person should be competent to contract now that is what we are trying to understand what do we mean by persons who are competent to contract so that is defined under section 10 uh, sorry section 11 section 10 st talks about valid essentials of a valid contract and parties should be capable that is an essential and now who are the parties capable that is defined in section 11 so section 11 of in the indian contract act states that every person is competent to con enter into contract who is these are the three conditions first it should be the age of the majority according to the law to which he is subject to. Yes, age of majority. Then second provisions or uh, uh, section 11 subsection B says of sound mind and subsection C says not disqualified from contract by any law to which he is subject to. This is what I believe this we have already seen this slide somewhere it has already appeared that the, these are the persons who are eligible to enter into a contract these are the parties but what are the different provisions related to these parties let's try to understand when we are saying somebody who has attained the age of majority what do we mean by that so minors agreement subsection uh, like section 11 subsection a deals with minors agreement now who is major who is minor how do we know that that we know from the indian majority act 1875 so according to section 3 of the indian majority act 1875 a minor is a person who has not completed 18 years of age. This is a benchmark. Except in cases where guardian of a minor or his property or both is appointed, the age of majority is 21. So generally it is age of majority is 18, but in certain scenarios that same age of majority becomes 21. So we just need to understand that in certain scenarios the same age is 21, but generally it is 18 years of age right just let me just change the color I think this is uh, not working over here I believe yeah so when we are saying age of majority in certain scenarios we mean 21 but in certain cases like generally we mean uh, 18 but in certain cases it is 21 also that we need to remember that is what we are trying to say by minors agreement now what are the provisions with related to minors agreement see First it says an agreement with or by a minor is void ab initio. Void ab initio means void from the very beginning. Initio means initial stage itself. So any agreement with a minor is fake, uh, void. Void ab initio. That you should remember. Void ab initio. And what we say inoperative how do we know that there is a popular case law called mohiri bb versus dharmodash ghosh now what happened first it is clear under section 10 and 11 that a minor is not competent to enter into a contract but neither section 10 or 11 clarifies whether the agreement with minor is wide or voidable it doesn't say but this case law made it clear that any agreement with minor is void of an issue what was the case law a minor D mortgaged his house in favor of M to get a loan and M advanced the loan. Now D means Dharmodas and M means Mohiri Bibi. So Dharmodas, a minor who mortgaged. Now what is mortgage? Mortgage is like you're giving uh, your house as a collateral and taking a loan, borrowing some money. So this guy did that. Subsequently, D sued, Dharmodas sued M for setting aside the mortgage stating that he was undergo when he executed the mortgage. Right? Uh, sorry when he was under he was underage when he executed the mortgage so now the mortgage see the mortgage was an agreement now this dharmodas he's saying that this mortgage the property which mohiri bibi is possessing now it is because of a, an agreement called mortgage and now the time at the time when this mortgage was entered this guy was underage he was a minor so what should happen now they went to court and it was held that the mortgage was void and therefore it was cancelled mortgage is void because this guy was 
under age and he was a minor the money lender requested for repayment of the amount now the money lender the mohiri bibi was like since this guy hasn't uh, like whatever property i had he took it away now at least i should be getting my money back advanced to him as uh, to the minor as part of consideration for mortgage but court held it was a void agreement both the agreements were void even the mortgage as well as the loan so it was held from this day from this uh, this is called uh, called as you know a uh, fundamental ground breaking a uh, case law we should say it is a settled law now that a minor's contract is void from the very beginning that is what we mean by void ab initio so any agreement you entered with a minor is void from the very beginning that is what is popular that is what is the provision as of now right next it says minors agreement cannot be rati ratified on attaining majority so to ratify means to adapt or to approve ratifying means to say okay whatever i have done if i am saying okay to it means ratified so i cannot okay anything a minor cannot okay anything even after attaining the majority so uh, whatever i have done as a minor i cannot say that this is now okay now i accept it minor any agreement with a minor is null and void if i am saying okay i can enter into a new contract after being a major but as a minor i cannot do so a minor cannot ratify an agreement and for uh, enter at the time of his minority a contract which was void then cannot be made val valid by subsequent ratification right if a ne uh, if it necessary a new contract can be entered right but that would require fresh consideration yes for past consideration consideration can be passed though but there should be a consideration without consideration there cannot be a contract something that has already done as a minor at that time if i'm not promising see whatever you have done to me uh, like something you have given to me and that that time i was a minor now you're asking me back for whatever agreement i have entered now i'm denying it and you're saying that you know let's enter a new agreement but that was already done if i'm not promising i'm not obliged to and even if i'm promising i was a minor at that time so a fresh consideration would be required right just remember that a minor cannot ratify cannot approve anything no return of benefit if a minor has received any benefit under a void agreement he cannot be asked to compensate or pay for it right something some agreement something you have given and it is it is void null and void we are very much aware of it you cannot ask me to pay you back for that that is also there so no benefit or no return of benefit next condition it says rule of estoppel does not apply against minor now what is this rule of estoppel that we need to understand estoppel is a rule of ev evidence where a person expressly or impliedly induces another person to believe that a certain state of things exist later on cannot deny of that state of things so yeah rule of estoppel means if i told you something that the sun rises in the west later on i cannot say that sun does not rise in the west because i have told you right i cannot deny that if you come to me and you tell me that sun rises in the west i cannot deny that sun doesn't rise because i am the one who has told you so this is what rule of estoppel means whatever i have told you i cannot deny but in case of minor even this rule does not apply so whatever minor says you cannot say that minor cannot deny minor can of course deny but it, it test is what we have written in case of minor the rule of estoppel does not apply this is again uh, we need to uh, remember that in case of minor this rule of estoppel where the person who has uh, you know believes who has told you to believe something cannot deny that this is not true so minor can say that a minor who has entered into a contract by misrepresenting his real age can subsequently disclose his real age and seek declaration that agreement is void on the ground of minority this is what has happened in this case right mohiri bibi versus dharmodas ghosh this case was the same that this guy misrepresenting his age took a loan mortgaged the property later on saying that i was under age so what is it he told that something he uh, said that he is of age of majority later on he is saying i'm not so you cannot hold minor for that minor cannot be held responsible for anything that is what we are trying to say next it is there can be no specific performance of minor's agreement now what is specific performance a minor's agreement being absolutely void which means there can be no specific performance however if the agreement is entered by the guardian of the minor's benefit it can be successfully uh, specifically enforced specific performance means something you are supposed to do specifically like let's suppose there is an agreement between you and me 
that you are supposed to perform a dance performance at a show which i am organizing so that is specific a dance by you that is specific i cannot ask anybody else to dance in the place of you so that is something called as specific performance but you cannot force minor for specific performance as well but for the minor's benefit if it is uh, it can be specifically enforced if it is entered by guardian right if it is entered by minor then no but ga guardian can enter of course on behalf of minor but it should be to the benefit of minor that is important if it is not benefiting minor then not so remember that uh yeah next it says minor cannot be declared insolvent insolvency means insolvent means your uh, debts are more than your assets so the amount of money you have in your bank account and the amount of loan that you are having like let's suppose you you have the total property that you are having is of 1 lakh but the amount of debt that is there upon you is 10 lakhs if i sell out all your properties everything i'm going to get only 1 lakh so that means you are insolvent you can always declare that i'm in insolvent i'm not in a position to pay back my debts that is called insolvent now a minor cannot do that there cannot be a debt on minor that is first thing very much clear so if there cannot be a debt he cannot be held insolvent also minor cannot be declared as insolvent because he is incapable of contracting debts right debts cannot be taken and he is not personally liable even for necessary supply to him the only thing the only debt that a minor can have is something he has been supplied as necessary so if you are supplying even the necessaries for that also you cannot ask for money so minor cannot be held insolvent these are the provisions right but there are certain exceptions to minor's agreement where a minor can also be part of contract and the agreement is not void that is the exception so what are those exceptions minor can be admitted to the benefits of the partnership yes you can take minor as a member of your partnership firm but to the only the benefit that means only to the profits not for the losses this is again one of the provisions if you look at uh, the indian uh, partnership act that there you will find that minor can be admitted to the benefits of the partnership but not for the losses minor can never bear losses only to the benefits minor can be appointed as an agent yes agent means the entire responsibility of the agent lies on the principal so minor can be agent can be an agent but not a principal you cannot appoint agents as a minor but you can be an agent for a principal minor can be promisee or transferee minor cannot be a promiser minor cannot promise that i will do this thing but others can promise to the minor that yes we will do like in case of partnership as we said that minor can be admitted to the benefits not for the losses so promisee means the receiving end minor can be at the receiving end but not at the doing not at the execution end minor is not supposed to execute or do anything you cannot enforce you cannot force minor to do things but if you have promised something that's yes that can be done if you're saying that i will give you this much money for the performance that you have done that means and later on you're saying that whatever you have promised that was with a minor but minor can take you to the court you cannot take minor to the court but a minor can take you to the court that is there minor is liable to pay out of his property for necessary supply to him or to his dependent yes this one we have already seen that minor cannot be held insolvent even for the necessaries but if he is having certain property he is liable to pay out of the property for only for the necessaries supplied to him or his dependents that is there that in case of property is there if there is no property you cannot force if out of property he can pay you cannot ask him to pay out of his pocket if he is not having property you cannot say that he is insolvent we, we we already studied that minor cannot be held insolvent so these are certain exceptions next it is contract by a person of unsound mind now what do we mean by unsound mind unsound means un unsound mind means this is section 12 okay 10 was essentials 11 was a minor uh, this thing uh capacity uh, capacity of parties and by 12 we are saying a person is said to be of sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time of making the contract he is capable capable of what to understand the terms of contracts yes if the person is able to understand the terms then find to form a rational judgment rational judgment means no, he can think normally then to uh, to the effect of his contract like what what is happening what is going to happen to his interest like interest means what is the benefit that he is going to get or what is the sacrifice he is supposed to make if he is able to understand he is able to form a rational judgment that is the term we use so 
that person is of sound mind a person is said to be of sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time of making the contract is capable of understanding the terms of the contract and form a rational judgment as to its effect upon his interest again this is common this is common sense but there is something a person who is usually of sound mind like usually who he can understand but occasionally of unsound mind like we can say sometimes this guy is getting certain shock waves of uh, craziness or madness we can say that this guy gets mad sometimes or this person is normal during the day but evenings he get mad that like example for example so a person who is usually of sound mind but occasionally of unsound mind can enter into a contract but when he is of sound mind right that is there and a person who is usually of unsound mind but occasionally of sound mind can also enter into a contract but when he is of sound mind that is there uh yeah this is uh, important a person of unsound mind is incompetent to contract now what do we mean by this sound mind and unsound mind that is again dealt with something separately now generally this uh, unsound mind is for drunkards idiots lunatics all those people now next provision is persons disqualified by law who are the people who are actually disqualified by law person who are disqualified by any law cannot enter into a contract if the law is specifically di uh, disqualifying they cannot but following persons are disqualified to enter who are those persons one is alien enemy alien enemy means an in so uh, what we call it as alien enemy means somebody who belongs to a foreign national right that is going to be alien enemy somebody who is foreign to us is alien and if their country is at war with us if their country is at war with us that is they becomes alien enemy like let, let's let's example there is a war between india and pakistan somebody who belongs to who belongs to pakistan is enemy to us somebody who belongs to pakistan that means he's not of our nation that means he's an alien also so that person becomes an alien enemy you cannot enter into a contract with alien enemy and bring to the court you cannot enforce it to the court that is void then foreign sovereigns now these foreign sovereigns are like the ambassadors these are the representatives of their nations so a foreign sovereign like let's suppose ambassador of united states like i'm giving you a bad example because uh, as, as far as i remember there is no ambassador of uh, usa as of now in india like for last 2 3 years i don't think there is an ambassador in india for usa so what are we saying is like let's take if there is let's imagine that there is an ambassador for usa in india so if that ambassador is entering entering into a contract with you that ambassador is a foreign sovereign he is a representative of usa so whatever he is doing in india all those things are binding on his country so that person cannot enter into a, you cannot enter into a contract with that person and later on by make it binding in your nation because whatever you're going to do that will impact that person's nation as well so foreign sovereigns are disqualified to enter into a contract and then convicts and insolvents convicts are the persons who have been you know punishment has been given to them we should say right so they are if that person enters into a contract you cannot enforce it that person is not in a position to perform anything because he is already a convict right he is there in the jail he is getting sentenced for something what he has done so you cannot ask him to perform and come out of the jail and do certain things because court has ordered to stay in the jail so convicts cannot enter into contract and then we are saying insolvents insolvents means somebody who is not having any property how can you ask that person to do something if he is incapable he is insolvent he has already declared that i am not in a position to pay anybody my existing debts itself i cannot pay so how can i enter into a new contract so law does qualifies them right so these are the provisions these are what we are need to we need to understand one is minor the other one is person disqualified by law and persons of unsound mind these are the persons who are incompetent to enter into any contract